Here at the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase, first year, second day, we've come to look at something, well, kind of a lot different than we normally look at. We're in a space where this young woman here is selling jewelry. And you gotta wonder, well, why would we want that? Well, there's probably a couple of reasons. Number one, all the guys that go to shows need to go home with something that the missus is gonna like, or perhaps it's the other way around, but in any event, she's found a market for this. So I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Rachel St. Louis, who is still a young person, but you got started really young. When did you first tackle this business of making jewelry, Rachel? When I was eight years old. Eight years old? Weren't you supposed to be playing with dolls then or something? I was never a doll person. <laughs> Very interesting. So tell me exactly how that started. You gave me some uh, prep here before we started the video. How did you, wh why did you decide to start making jewelry? Well, we had too many beads just lying around the house and my mom always wore beautiful earrings. So then one day I put two and two together and decided <laughs> I'll make it. And then I had all kinds of earrings at home lying around and I just asked her if I could sell it. So you said uh, you made these things and your mom went, oh, I like these. Of course, that's mom. So she would probably like pretty much anything you did anyway, I'm guessing. But they must have looked pretty good to some other people, too. So you decided, well, maybe I could sell these. Is that the idea? Yep. And I sold them at the local craft fair and basically sold out. And then more and more people are asking for more. And Is that right? I decided just to make more. And, and and I'm looking at there's a lot of product in here. Have you made every single item in here? Almost every single item, yeah. My mom, of course, had to help out for big events like Oshkosh uh -huh. and EAA. She has to help out. Just to help you gear up and have enough product. Because that's thousand of product, and that's just really hard. Yeah, right. That's a lot of hours to get that done. You still got to go to school yeah. and be a young woman too. So you can't do this all the time. It's very ambitious of you, but I'm impressed. There's there's a lot of individual items in here, and I'm guessing each one has a fair amount of time on it. Give me an example. What's a typical amount of time you spend making one item of jewelry? One item, probably a minute. Oh, really? Okay, so some <laughs> of them are really quick, yeah. huh? And tell me about the hard ones, then. How long do they take? Hard here? ones, like sea glass, could take between 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so you can, on the piece. you can still get them together pretty quick, though. Yeah. All right. Well, very good. So behind me here, I'm going to get out of the way of the camera a bit. You've told me that this is kind of where you started. And what I'm looking at here, in case the camera doesn't pick up the details, is these, these look like little tiny tree ornaments. Yeah. Is that where it got started? Yeah, just little things that were laying around the house that, you know, you'd just, like, decorate the house with, little tiny things, and then just put them together because you notice they could go on earrings. <laughs> so did, did you go acquire this, you know, the little hook that goes in your ear? Did you buy that from somebody? Or are you making that too? Um, it was at the house just lying around because, of course, the earrings. So then you just take it off a different earring. Oh, okay, on. okay. Well, so now when you have this many, do you buy some components yeah, we have and then to, add your art to it? Yeah, you have to buy the little beads and put it together. And then it's just a lot of, like, the hooks you have to buy from website and then the beads and then you put them together and make an earring. Now, tell me, you know, you're 14 now, is that correct? Yep. So... You've got a bunch of 14, 13, 15 year old friends, I'm guessing. Do they think you're strange to be doing this kind of thing or do they think it's cool? A lot of them, I've been doing it for so long. I've known them so long that they just, it's normal it's now. It's just part of you. They come in, I, for their birthday, I give them a free pair of earrings and <laughs> that's all the They kind of know what they're them. getting on, yeah. a, on a birthday gift from All of them get the same uh, thing. Are they happy with it? Oh yeah, they love it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about going out and buying stuff. I just have to look in here and I can grab something. So you started with Christmas. And you went to trade shows and, uh, and uh, craft fairs, and people were buying it, and you knew you could do more of this. Is that it? Yep. A couple of years afterwards, I went to aviation because I went flying with my dad. So then I started doing all kinds of aviation stuff. Ah, okay. So your dad's a pilot. Yep. And you just went with him just to go along, or did you have this in mind when you went there? No, I went for a flight with him this one day. Okay. And then I looked down, and I saw the ground, and I thought, I'm going to... I'm going to make some earrings out of his plane. <laughs> and show me a couple examples of that then. Like, there's little planes, like float planes. Oh, and yeah. And this is just a regular plane. Now, did you make this? No, it's a bead you have to buy. Ah, I see, okay. A pendant or All right. charm. All right, so well, these here are very eye-catching, you know, I'm spinners. sure. Spinners. Yeah, okay, they're so they're spinners. They're actually from spinner? Cabela, Cabela spinners. Ah, is that right? Okay. A fishing lure yep. kind of thing. <laughs> we actually had someone that um, one day lost their fishing lure and just took it off the earring. <laughs> Is that right? So it's a very useful bit of oh, jewelry yeah. then. 
find yourself on a lake, go ahead and fish. All right, so, and I see now you've got a very clever kind of display thing here. I'm going to pull this one off the hook. Well, I'm not going to pull that one off the hook. Yes, I will. So, okay, so what I'm seeing here is a couple little helicopters, and they're in an earring, but the background of it, if the camera can't see that, it's a little sectional chart, yeah. which that has to attract. Any pilot is going to go, oh, I know that. I'll bet you the guys when they walk in here sort of gravitate yeah, to something they know. Yeah, we get a lot of that. Is that right? Comments off that. I'm kind of thinking it drew my eye. and uh, But, you know, I'm just like every other guy, and I suppose this is true for women as well, but looking for something to bring. Now, my spouse does come with me to these shows, and she does enjoy it, but not quite like I do. I can look at an airplane and the nuts and bolts on it forever, and she'd walk, walk away and, and look at stuff like this. So I've learned, too, to maybe I ought to get one of those. That'll buy me some goodwill. Do you find that when you go to air shows and market your products? Yeah, a lot of people come in and say, oh, I have to get this for my wife back home or <laughs> throw them back home because they didn't want to come in and look at planes with me. <laughs> sure. Now, have you ever heard from any of those spouses afterward for somebody that said, wow, my husband brought this thing home and I'm really intrigued by it. Did, have you heard that? Yeah, I've had a lot of people actually come back and say, I got this, so I needed to come back and get more because I liked what you had. <laughs> so then they came back without their husbands and they got <laughs> oh, perfect. Stuff. So you're actually helping to draw people to air shows by what by what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. All right, let's go over here and uh, look at some of this sea glass. Tell me what sea glass is, Rachel. I'd, I'd never really heard that expression before. Well, sea glass you normally find on a beach or a lake, like one of the Great Lakes. Um, it's glass from either bottles or any type of glass that was thrown overboard. It takes either 20 to 50 years to make because when glass is broken, of course, it's sharp. Uh, so then it Yeah, and these gets pieces tumbled. here I see, they, they don't look like broken glass to me. No, well, that one maybe a little bit, but most of it's kind of shaped to it, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, they get tumbled by the rocks and oh, sand. I see. Okay. And it um, wears down the sides to give it that unique shape. Like each piece of glass is different. Yeah, there's no. I don't see any two that look exactly alike here, which would make them special to people, I'm sure. Yeah. So now these, what I'm seeing here, look like mostly pin. Oh no, you've got earrings as well. So. When they have earrings on, they're very similar. You're good at picking them to be similar, but they're not identical, right or left, huh? No, they're not exactly identical, and some people don't like that because ah. they want to have exactly identical, <laughs> but of course, well, others they, like it too. They have to buy a manufactured thing mm -hmm. or something then or whatever, so. But now you're going to make an airplane, and not, not one to wear in your earring, but an actual one you can fly in. How did you decide to do that, Rachel? Well, I always loved aviation since my dad first took me up in his plane. And when I looked down, I saw the ground, and I thought, I never knew it looked like that. <laughs> it's so much different. And so I decided one day that I really loved planes. So I just always wanted to build one. I went to EAA, the One Week Wonder, ah, okay. and put a rivet in one of the planes. Oh, you were part of building that yeah. airplane then. Okay. I loved the feeling of putting that rivet in. So then I decided after that. <laughs> one rivet got you? Is that <laughs> oh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I decided after that. Take that, that guys. And there's only 19,000 more rivets to go. You're really going to love this airplane when you're done, huh? And I decided after that to go around and look at all the different manufacturers and everything. And I just loved it. So I want to tell a little bit of a story here about you went up to a lot of these people. Your dad helped explain this as well, and you went with your dad to some of these people, and and they would you would walk up and you would say, I'm interested in building an airplane, and they would look at your dad or something instead of you. Tell me a little bit more about how that went. Well, first thing they do when they look at my dad, I'd be like, no, no, I'm doing it. <laughs> and then they'd be like, but you're a girl and you're young. And I was like, yeah, I'm really interested in doing it. None of them took me seriously. They all thought, well, people talk, of course. That's crazy. I'm sorry they did that. But you found one that was very receptive to you. Tell me about them. It's Bush Cat by Skyreach. Since the first day I saw them, they said, yeah, of course, we'll help you out. Get things as soon as we can, anything you need. And it just... I found perfect plane. Perfect. That's wonderful. You like flying it. I've flown it. You'll know a lot more about building it than I know because I've never built one. But, you know, all the other folks out there, all these other, there's a lot of very nice airplanes. They didn't get your business, and Skyreach did with their bush cat. So, cool. Let's go outside and have a look at the project that you're beginning. Okay. All right. So, now we've come out, and we're standing in front of what is taking shape as an airplane, but there's one more piece of jewelry that you got to look at because they kind of connect up really well. 
Tell me what this is, Rachel, that we're looking at here in case people can't figure out what that is. Uh, this is a pop rivet that I made into earrings. <laughs> and you know what? You might think some women wouldn't want that, but why do they want a tool hanging from their ear or a part hanging from their ear? But just as we came out here to do this part, somebody walked in wearing exactly that. I think it's a really neat idea. And I bet you when women wear this and go someplace where there's no airplanes or anything, People look at that and go, what on earth is that? Yeah. Has that been the reaction? Yeah, like at different craft fairs, I have these out and they're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> they, they try to make it into something else. I'm like, yeah, it's, it goes on a plane. They're like, oh. It's a plane part, right? Yeah. So that, that makes it kind of cool, I guess. All right, so there's a couple of these things, not the jewelry, but the actual pop rivets on the airplane you're working on. But tell me how it is. We're looking at the center, center fuselage of a bush cat here. And tell me how it is that you are buying this. How does how is that working? I sell my jewelry to buy different parts of this plane, and the business is completely doing this. So I whatever. So your I make jewelry from that, sales are completely buying the airplane. Yeah, whatever I make from that, I get to buy from this plane. <laughs> All right, cool. So just in case you thought, I don't. What do I care about jewelry? If that's what you thought, well, maybe you should reconsider that because here's a young woman industrious and ambitious enough to take jewelry and buy an airplane with it. So there, folks. Well, that's very cool. So you've got this much of it done now. You did all the work here? Yep. Yep. Me, and my, me and my father, of course, he had to be there. Uh, okay. Take pictures, document, but yeah, this is... Is he giving you some advice or are you figuring it all out on your own or how's that part go? Mainly figuring it all on my own. Of course, he has to help some things because... Well, you need two hands to do certain things, I'm sure, so... Yep. But anybody that could do what we saw inside, I'm sure, could figure out how to do this. Yeah. How are their How are their instructions? How are you finding the instructions oh, to build the airplane? Great instructions, like building Legos with those instructions. Is that right? Really? It's Put part A into hole B and go forward. Huh? Yep. All right. Cool. So when do you think uh, you'll sell enough jewelry and have enough time? You're still going to school and have your life to live too. So you're tackling a lot here, and I'm impressed by that. But when do you think you might finish the project, Rachel? If I had the entire kit right now I'm sure it'd be done but it just well you but you got to sell stuff yeah. and you got to buy stuff and so what do you what do you what's your guess on that probably by Oshkosh I would hope oh really oh, that's soon then okay this isn't like two or three years of selling jewelry to be able to buy it all I hope not well good I hope not too and we'll hopefully can help you a little bit here one of the advantages of course is this is a very reasonably priced airplane some of the ones you looked at might have cost a lot more this is got a pretty good price tag on it. Yeah, it does. And what are you going to end up building? Is it nose wheel? Is it tail dragger? It's a nose wheel. Nose wheel, okay. And then, all right, so now you got a whole airplane built. Let's just leap forward in time a little bit. Sold enough jewelry, bought enough parts, got it all together, assembled it. Now here's an airplane sitting here. Then what? Are you going to take lessons, or how's that part going to work? Yeah, I'm hoping to get my pilot's license even before my driver's license. <laughs> That's one of my goals. Cool. And, um, yeah. Well, that means in the next uh, couple of years then, because you're not too far away from being able to get a driver's license. No, next year. Yeah, so so you're going to be working on this and going to town. So let me ask you, do your parents say, that's enough working on the airplane, you got to go back and do your physics book or whatever it is you're studying? Do they have to pull you away from this to do the stuff that kids are supposed to be doing? Or no, what people think is... not really. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, okay, we got to work on homework, but... <laughs> Mostly you know how to manage that yeah. yourself? Get the homework done, then go to the plane. Well, you sound like a very together young woman, Rachel. I'm very impressed by what I saw inside. I know nothing about making jewelry. I don't know all that much about making airplanes either, so you're really going to know a lot more than I do in another year or so. Yeah. Pretty yeah, impressive. Definitely. Excellent. Tell me how we can find out more about it, and for those that are watching and go, well, I need to learn, can I buy some of this jewelry online, or do I have to go to shows to get it? Yeah, I have a website and a Facebook page. My website is rachelsjewelrymachias.com. Okay. And then my Facebook is rachelsjewelrymachias. Okay, excellent. So, and they can go buy things online. Yeah. You've got a store and they can say, yep, I, I want those pop rivet earrings. Because uh, I'm just guessing some guys are going to go, yeah, I'm going to get my wife that. She'll have to participate in my airplane because she's wearing part of it. <laughs> yeah, of course not everything's on there because so many things inside. But yeah, of course, right. It's, it's pretty updated. But for those that couldn't come here to the land, you've now gotten a chance to meet Rachel St. Louis, hear about her jewelry enterprise that's going on and the airplane she's building. That's very special. We're glad to be able to talk with you. You can find lots more about all kinds of light sport aircraft, light kits, ultralights, including the Bushcat, 
on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Rachel and myself here at DeLand.